welcome to No Apologies on Beck. I'm Lori Hins with you tonight. I'm very pleased to have once again in the chair, Rick Becker, my favorite, favorite guest of all time. Wow. You are. You're my favorite guest. Thank you. Because you're also my favorite host. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. So <laughs> I really, you know, we, we had a lot of really, really good fun on the show over the last year. And it's always great to have you back in the building. Yeah. It just is. I love being on here. It is. It's really fun. So tonight I thought we would just talk a little bit about politics in North Dakota and the hijinks and shenanigans. Oh, uh, yeah, shenanigans. shenanigans. Yeah, so I, I want to, right, I want to cover some things because, of course, the, the primary is coming up and uh, early voting is already happening. Mm -hmm. Other primaries have been going on in the country. My good friend Jeremy Munson looks like he may have just barely lost in oh, congressional no. district in Minnesota. 1 in Minnesota. I was watching, do you know that they were showing all of that last night and they never once mentioned Minnesota. I mean, Georgia, Georgia, all of the Texas stuff and I right. never saw anybody mention anything about Minnesota. Well, it wasn't high profile, like in Georgia, Trump made right. endorsements. Right. You know, it's Pens all about yeah. Trump, it was, always yeah. it's this big national thing. But yeah, Jeremy is fantastic. I, 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 it Good looks guy. like he didn't get in, which is most unfortunate. But. Um, which brings me back to North Dakota. A lot of stuff going on. I wanted to cover it. We talked about it some when I was here last. And, um, you know, it's, it's, I think that there's a lot to be said. There's a lot to discuss with what's, with what's happened. It's a really interesting state for those people who are just tuning in for the very first time and have never seen anything about North Dakota politics. In North Dakota, we have a supermajority in both houses. And so my friends, um, from the other states look at us and like, oh, wow, this mythical North Dakota, it's so amazing that you have all these Republicans there. Yeah, we do, but we have all spectrum of Republicans. And so therefore, since we don't have a viable alternative with which to bicker, we bicker amongst ourselves. Right. It's just well, and it's been shown that for the states like North Dakota, Wyoming, and some others, once you get a super majority of Republicans, the overall um, position on the political spectrum is much less conservative. It shifts. And that's what happened in North Dakota because you because again when you have a supermajority or in North Dakota an Uber supermajority <laughs> uh mega, Republican ultra mega. <laughs> right. The Repu re with the word Republican can mean anything. Right. And so it gets diluted out. And that's absolutely what happened because the real strong conservative uh grounded legislators are fewer in number by far than those that aren't, and so they can be ignored, and so it's uh, so it's interesting. And labeled nationally, <laughs> legislatures that have a just a, a very small majority of Republicans tend to be very conservative, and the reason is because they need every one of the votes, and so a handful of conservative legislators can can cause the entire le legislature to truly be conservative. It's phenomenal. So in our state, uh, we have some interesting stuff going on, just in light of the fact that the primary is on June 14th. Yes. So it's just under three weeks away. It's really coming up, and things have really heated up. It, they've heated up, and there, there are several things that I'm concerned about. Number one, um, the Republican Party, the state Republican Party. You know, we had the state convention, and the theme was unity. unity. The theme was unity. What I'm finding is it's a lot like when Obama and Biden talk about unity. What they mean is do what we want and then we will have unity. That, that truly, that's what the state party means. And the reason I say that is because never before in my you know, vast 10 years of being involved <laughs> with the state party have I seen anything like this. They are, so candidates get endorsed by their districts. And far and away, the grassroots true conservatives have had struggled with that. And that's because those in power in the districts can make the rules so that it's very, very difficult to broach and get in. Mm -hmm. Over the years, though, and especially in the last four years, the conservatives have increased in numbers. So they actually are, are becoming formally endorsed by their districts. Now, in the past, the state party and others have said, hey, you know, if you, if you want to be a candidate, if you want our support, you have to get enough people come to the district, become endorsed. We'll support you. Well, now it turns out the conservatives are bringing enough people, and they still are not getting any support. You have, as one example, in the northeast part of the state, Donna Henderson is running for the House. Mm -hmm. She's endorsed. 9A, I believe. The state party is sending out mailers for the unendorsed candidate. What? The state party. 
Yeah. It's that, it says that on the it bottom. It does indeed, Lori. Yeah, it oh, does indeed. So I know you're an well, executive member. I don't live member, in that part so of the country, and I'm just so sad. Uh, I would appreciate your voice when you have your next committee meeting because yeah. that's baloney. That is baloney. Um, and then and then you've got other. You've got Chet Pollard, who's the majority leader, mm -hmm. and he's spending his uh, leadership caucus funds on two non-endorsed candidates because they're. Friends? I, I mean, I don't really understand this because that's no. not how it's supposed to work. The endorsed is by the people, so these that's, are see, that's these the are problem. country club people who are just picking and choosing their winners and losers. That's exactly right, Lori. That's the problem: is that if we respect the process, then we understand that whatever the process might be in the districts, mm -hmm. that's the decision of the people who are involved in the district, and we must respect their like decision. Like it or don't like it. If that's you right. don't like the person who is endorsed, then next election you get more people there for the other guy. Yeah. So you've got um, Chet Pollard putting his money in, say, for Dwight Kiefert uh, out in Valley City. He's not endorsed. Um, he did not make it at all, but that's where Chuck uh, Chet is deciding to put his money. I guess he has that right, but but it's extremely egregious when the state party does it. It really is. I'm very disappointed to hear that. I did not. I honestly wasn't right. aware that that was happening in that district. I know of some other stuff that's going on because I know that there have been people on Facebook. They've been putting up all these glossy pictures okay, of all yeah. these. I'm like, oh. Now of there these you're getting into the the mailers, right? You've right. Got, you've tons got of mailers. Doug Burgum. And he may be right. I thought he was dumb on, on this particular thing. I thought that if you keep bombarding people's mailboxes mm -hmm. relentlessly day in and day out with mailers, they're going to get sick of it, so they actually vote against the people that you're trying to support. But maybe not? Maybe not. I don't know. But there, so, so Doug Berg, and by the way, there's going to be a press conference tomorrow at the Capitol. I heard that. Yes. And... Um, we are going to bring up this concern, this constitutional concern. Doug Burgum is putting in millions, literally millions of dollars, into a PAC he formed and controls, which supports candidates that are handpicked by him. He did it in 2020. And back in 2020, all but one of the candidates he supported were endorsed. So people were saying, oh, you know, you got to give them a pass. They're endorsed. You can't complain. Maybe one isn't. Maybe it's a one-off. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, we're seeing in 2022, he's supporting far more candidates, and nearly all of them are unendorsed. He is so focused on trying to create a legislature that he can control. But wait a minute. And wait that's a minute. Dakota Leadership PAC. Dakota Leadership PAC people, if you get mailers from Dakota Leadership PAC, vote the opposite of what it says. You don't need to know anything else. And I'll tell you, Doug Burgum is relying on you to be an uninformed voter because, uh, in part, every single candidate according to him, is conservative. It says it on conservative. Conservative means nothing to Doug Burgum. It means nothing. It's a word you use to get elected. That's it. Welcome back to No Apologies on Beck with Rick Becker from District 7. And I am Lori Hins, your host. And the Bourbon Bureau feels a lot happier with actual whiskey on. The I would beer. imagine. <laughs> you teetotaler, you. I know, it's right. I'm like, <laughs> got the water. It's so lame, I know. Yes. I don't think anybody wants to see this show with me drinking that. <laughs> no. I do. No, you're the only one. <laughs> so we were talking politics. We were talking Dakota Leadership PAC. Yeah. The, the, uh, the PAC funded by Governor Doug Burgum to take out conservatives because he doesn't understand the importance of the separation of the branches of government. Because well, he that wants was my to question. Is that the not their separate ones up for a reason, for checks and balances, yeah. rather than... It's in the Constitution that there's all sorts of restrictions on the governor in the Constitution with regard to um, coercion, threats, and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that what we're getting to is a point in which he his, what he's exerting, what he's flexing by putting millions of dollars into that pack and... And having it sit there, there's 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 uh, you know public disclosures. Everyone knows it's in the newspapers. He's putting it. millions of dollars in. Th those millions of dollars are either currently being spent or are sitting there as a cloud and a warning to the legislators to do what the governor wants or else. Now that is a threat, and it, that is against the Constitution, section a, or Article Five, Section Ten. That is a deterrent to people actually. Voting yeah. the way they want, even. So, so I'll repeat that's really it. really interesting. If okay. you get something in the mail mm -hmm. from Dakota Leadership Pack, do the opposite of what it says and don't let this governor be a tyrant like he wants to be. Second thing. Okay. 
Brighter Future Alliance. Yes. Brighter, darker, Brighter Future Alliance is another pack. Now, I don't know if Doug is sending his money there. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. It doesn't matter. But Brighter Future Alliance is run by Pat Finken. Mm -hmm. He was the president of Odney Advertising. He's responsible for getting every establishment, statewide elected uh, official, into office, I think, nearly every anyway. Um, and his approach politically is smart. Unfortunately, it's also very unsavory and very not North Dakota nice because it's based on lies and misrepresentations. So I looked on the website, uh, the Brighter Future, Future Alliance website, and it has on there, I don't know if you know this, the Brighter Future Pledge. Did you know they had a pledge? No. There's a pledge. I will support public funding for critical infrastructure, including roads and schools. I will support balancing North Dakota's budget without raising taxes. I will support state economic programs and incentives to grow and diversify the North Dakota economy and create more good paying jobs. I will support the development of North Dakota's natural resources, including the coal, oil, and ag industries. Mm -hmm. And I will support workforce development programs this to attract, amazing. retain, and train a high quality workforce. That's the pledge That's they have. That's amazing. I'm so glad you brought that up. I, I was not enjoy that. that. I was not aware of that. So listen, folks, this is what the pledge is. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, it's saying you have to balance, the, that you're pledging to balance the budget without raising taxes. We have so damn much money and we are required to balance the budget constitutionally that anyone who's remotely claiming to be on the Republican Party ticket is going to please anybody. A, a, a frick, the frickin' Democrats can sign that part of it. Okay, the next parts. You've got three there that I heard mm -hmm. what they are, corporate welfare. You've right. got corporate welfare for economic development and diversification. What a load of bull crap. Tell me, what has government done? For the last 30 years, they've been trying to diversify the North Dakota economy by taking your tax dollars and doing something really smart and creative with it. What the hell have they done? Nothing. Nothing zero, not a zilch. I triggered you. I'm sorry about that. Okay, next, <laughs> they're talking about coal and energy. You know what that is? A bunch more corporate welfare. They're talking about taking your tax dollars and giving it to the corporations like Minn Kota, Summit, and others so they can take a bunch of carbon, which is plant food, store it underground, create a bunch of millionaires, which are not you folks. They're other people. That's, and then number three, there was another corporate welfare in there. What, what a load of crap. Workforce yes. development programs to workforce attract retain and Oh, yeah, and because high government can create oh, I'm jobs. I'm sorry, but high quality workforce stupid is, are like, you? yeah, this is like, these are job speak here. It's all, it's, it's just, bull, it's, it's politician speak. Interesting. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. So Pat Finken with his Brighter Future Alliance. Folks, if you get a mailer from Brighter Future Alliance, vote the opposite way because Pat Fink and Brighter Future Alliance, what they are looking for are people that will play ball, that will work with the lobbyists, work with the government bureaucrats, work with the country club Republicans to make sure that your tax dollars go to favored businesses and industries and they can all pat each other on the back and play golf and isn't life grand. Vote against anyone that Dakota Leadership PAC or Brighter Future Alliance is telling you to vote for. Vote against them. This is interesting because on that same page they have candidate status. See a list of those North Dakota legislators who have signed the pledge and those who have not signed the pledge. And on here there are a lot more people who have not signed it than have signed it, which is very interesting. But I think this is from last cycle too because they've got Dave and Andal's name on here and he passed mm -hmm. away. Um, but the, in District 8, yes, Dave Andal and Dave Nering had signed it um, previously. Jeff Delzer, no as we know. Yeah. And then they've got a whole list on here. So you can go see it yourself and, and take a look at it. It's very so, instructive. Right, I, this, I'm going to take a look at that because uh, <laughs> it's going to tell me who to vote for and not vote for. Mm -hmm. um, I brought a graph or a picture for oh, you. Can you yes. pull that up? Yeah. This is from Brighter Future Alliance. Okay, look at this though. This is Jeff Magrum in, in, in District 8. And look at it. Man, is he evil. He voted to defund law enforcement. He voted, this is, this is the words that the Brighter Future Alliance is using, voted to defund law enforcement. And then underneath, he voted for this, voted no on that, blah, blah, blah. I can read some of it if it's you want. It's all crap. <laughs> well, yeah, be, that's because someone sent it to me. They took yeah. a picture of it. Okay. Yeah. But I'm telling you, Lori, that's Laurie, a pretty dark this looking is a picture. blatant lie. Pat Fink and Brighter Future Alliance, a blatant lie. There was no bill to defund anything. There was no bill to defund law enforcement. They used the same tactic when I was running for Senate with the blessings of Senator Hoven to, to keep putting forth these lies. What we have is the people of North Dakota are looking for conservative votes. They're looking for people 
who will represent them and spend money wisely. Mm -hmm. And when we as legislators get budgets that come to us from the various agencies and we find that those budgets are bloated and they're dramatically increasing, we vote against, if you're conservative, you vote against those budgets. It doesn't defund anything. It says we don't agree with this particular budget. And if it were to fail, it would go back to committee and it would come back to the legislature as a smaller budget. So this lie that's being perpetuated about defunding and voting against funding for this agency and that agency, Pat Fink and Brighter Future Alliance is relying on an uninformed electorate. They need voters to be uninformed and to believe simple, blatant lies like that. He's doing the same thing um, against Jeff Hoverson. Uh, Roscoe Australia is, is running against him. Roscoe, by the way, has an interesting, he's really pushing forth a, uh, and it's to get elected, it's smart politically, mm -hmm. but he has a plan to reduce taxes by 50%, property taxes, property taxes by 50%. Wow. Sounds great. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, it's bull crap. It's horrible. <laughs> It's a horrible plan because it's a buy-down. Oh. We already tried the buy-down. It didn't work. Our taxes increased by as much or more than the buy-down. So now we pay taxes to state government to buy down property taxes, and we're still paying property taxes that the cities and counties increased because we bought them down over here. So we are paying more in property taxes between buy-downs and to the locals than the national average. We're way above average. Can you believe North Dakota, with as much Shocking. money as we have coming in, Sad. we are paying far above the average in property taxes. It's unbelievable. So Roscoe's plan, great idea for getting reelected, horrible idea, and it's been admitted by several legislators on the floor, tenured veteran legislators, that what we tried didn't work. So the idea that we're going to do it again is ridiculous to me, but I digress. Before we are done here, a uh, press conference tomorrow, 4 p.m. at the Memorial Hall, Great Hall? Memorial Hall, that's, in the, that's the Capitol. It's right next to the governor's office. Okay. Yes, we're going to have a press conference. 4 p.m., and some legislators will be there with yeah, you? Yeah, we, we want to bring to attention, to light, what's happening uh, with the governor and his egregious abuse of his office in trying to create a legislature um, that will go according to his wishes. Well, we'll have to tune in for that because we're going to have to have some video there. So we'll try to make sure that you are up on what's going on and say because we want you to be educated. We want you to be educated about what's going on. All right, thank you very much. When we come back, we're going to talk to somebody. I hope you stick around, right? You're going to stick around with me? <sighs> yes, yes? Yeah, sure. Yes, he is. Okay, so we're going to be talking to somebody remotely about eminent domain. This will be great. You'll love it. We'll be right back.